Welcome to your Dirt Axe. Appreciate your business. Today we're going to talk about how to set up your Nerd Axe when you first get it. So the Nerd Axe is an Axe OS based device designed to run on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So when you first get it out, you're going to put it in your stand, you're going to plug in your power, you're going to power it on, you're going to see a screen that looks just like this. And we see that at the bottom that says Config Wi-Fi Portal. And it gives us a name, Nerdax 1FC5. We're going to come over to our Windows computer. In this case, it's a Windows computer. You can do this on Mac as well. We're going to click on our Wi-Fi icon, and we're going to look for that wireless network that it is broadcasting, 1FC5. So our computer's looking, trying to find it. We're going to give it a minute or two, and then it shows up. There it is. If it doesn't show up automatically, on the bottom right hand corner, you have a refresh button, just click that. We're gonna click connect and the computer is gonna to connect to the wireless network that's being broadcast by the Nerdax. I'm gonna come over here, we see our nice dashboard. Again, this is um, AxOS based. This is a fork of the primary AxOS project, the BitAx project. Runs the same ASIC chip as the BitAx Gamma. This is our Nerdax Gamma. There's, I'm sure very, lots of different ones out there on the market, but this is our Nerdax Gamma. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna to go to our settings screen. We're gonna change our Wi-Fi settings and we're gonna plug in our home wireless network. Again, 2.4 gigahertz. If you're not running a 2.4 gigahertz, you need to make sure that your wireless router is set up to broadcast at 2.4 gigahertz. I'm gonna plug in my information. We see our primary pool tab and our, stratum, our fallback stratum pool tab. So our primary is set to public pool. Our fallback is set to solo.ckpool.org. In our Stratum user, we're gonna use our Bitcoin wallet address, period, and then our worker name. Now the period and worker name are completely optional. You don't have to have them, but they're easy. They're kind of nice to have when you're looking on the pool stats and you're seeing how much your worker's doing over time, all that information. The worker name is gonna help you with that. But what's really, really important is that you put in your Bitcoin wallet address here, correct. It's gotta be the right case, everything. It's, uh, that's what you wanna make sure is put there. We see our frequency and our voltage set to our defaults, our shutdown temperatures, and then we see our automatic fan control flip screen is checked. So we've got in our wireless information. We've made sure that we our Bitcoin wallet address is in our stratum user and our fallback stratum user information. We're gonna click save and we're gonna restart. It's telling us it's restarting. And then I'm gonna go back down here on the bottom right hand corner, I'm gonna change my wireless back to my primary. Now, our BitX, or excuse me, our NerdX is now rebooting and it loads into its dashboard. We see all kinds of different stat information, our current hash rate, our fan speed, our voltages, all of that. What's really important here though is at the very top is we see an IP address. We see the 192.168.1.17. So I put my computer back on our home network and I'm at the top. I'm gonna put in that address, 192.168.1.17. And it's gonna load into the dashboard. Okay, remember, I'm back on our network and I load in that IP address and let it load. Now we see that our hash rate's starting to build up. <coughs> we see our shares accepted, none rejected so far. And our graph is starting to populate. We see things at the bottom like our power, our input voltage, our ASIC voltage, our ASIC temperature, and our voltage regulator temperature, and our frequencies, fan speed, that kind of information. Now, unlike a standard BitAxe device, what we're going to see on a NerdAx is we're going to see that the speed and the hat of the hash rate is going to slowly ramp over time. It's going to take a couple of minutes. Now, I just want to be clear: this is just a representation in a graph. In the background. Those two devices, both the BitX and the NerdX, were both, they come out of the gate hashing really high and they're gonna, they're gonna fluctuate a lot. The NerdX OS is gonna average that over time. It's gonna bring it in slowly. It's gonna slowly graph it out. Now, as this continues to populate, we're gonna eventually see, just like we see on the BitX, we're gonna see fluctuations in the hash rate over time. And that's okay. Uh, comparing these side by side, the share based on the frequency 
uh, and the voltages are very comparable. They're, they're pretty much the same. Again, it uses the same ASIC chip that we see in our BIDAX gamma for the NERDAX gamma. That's what we see here is our NERDAX gamma. Um, if you load in, you save all that information and it still won't connect and you still have that, that opening screen that tells you, hey, I can't connect. Again, make sure we're running 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi uh, that you're connecting to. And again, make sure you're connected to your primary. So if you run a guest account, a guest Wi-Fi, connect to your primary Wi-Fi. We get it all loaded in, we're still not seeing a hash rate. Two things that we need to be very mindful of. One, make sure that your Bitcoin wallet address is correct. It's got it, they're case sensitive, it needs to be correct. That's the first thing. Second thing, if you're running an ASUS router in your house or at your home office, make sure that AI Protect is turned off because it will prevent the communication back and forth between this device and the pool as it's accepting and submitting shares. A little bit different look. Again, the, the Nerdax stores this information. So if I were to navigate away from this web page, and go to Swarm or Settings or Influx Database, and I go back, I still see my information. Now, if I'm on a standard BIDAX device, this gets wiped every time. But this device will keep uh, some information. It keeps a lot more information on it based on the onboard storage. A um, little bit different design in the NerdAx. Again, foundationally, it is a fork of the primary BIDAX, uh, but it uses a different display, as you can see, a nice colorful display. A lot more memory on board. It stores a lot more information than the standard ESP32 based BitAx device. So that is how you set up your NerdAx. Enjoy. Good luck finding a block. Let us know if you need anything.